This morning that a cab pulled up to the 114th precinct and Shia LaBeouf was released. He was booked Shia and LaBeouf held here for several hours. Shia LaBeouf is free tonight after spending last night at a Midtown Police Precinct oh Station House. He was arrested. A story breaking overnight on Shia LaBeouf taken out of a Broadway theater in handcuffs. If be careful what you wish for was a reality. Fame. Oh, the price they pay. Let's rejoice it's not us. What do you do when the diamond that a celebrity turns to dust and feels as cheap and worthless as glitter? Several celebrities hate being famous, but why? The miserable are not made famous, but rather the opposite. Privacy becomes a luxury for the celebrity instead of a legal right. Entertainers like Shia LaBeouf defined it so clearly that it hurts. It's a harsh realization that the perks of the most coveted position in the world is not actually worth it. I explored previously in my documentary titled The Psychology of Fame why people become famous despite knowing its pitfalls and how fame changes them. But that was on a macro level. So why Shia? On an individual level, who was the honey boy who grew up seeking stardom? Believe it or not, a young Shia was once very artistically funny, and yes, funny on purpose. This explains his earlier work through his child and teen years. He grew up watching stand-up comedy and sought the type of spotlight and crowds full of laughing, smiling faces that would make him feel whole. That's what they're all lacking, wholeness. When his father would berate him and be in and out of the house for substance use, I wonder if his mind went there. Fame. The thing that freed him in imagination and plagues him in reality. Let's explore. I am not famous anymore. When promoting Nymphomaniac Volume 1 in 2014, LaBeouf wore this mask to its premiere at the Berlin Film Festival. Beyond this gimmicky stunt, he actually has some incredible introspection on fame. His behavior is certainly questionable, but his point of view is not. In 2007, Shia's career began to soar. He was not a Disney kid anymore, or a kid in general. As soon as he became legal drinking age and had an increase in fame, the world was there to watch what happens to a lot of 20 year old year old men who get too drunk on their birthday. Uh, so, so, so I got pretty wasted in Chicago and wound up celebrating in Walgreens. <laughs> what Walgreens? The drugstores. Yeah, the drugstore. And then another security guard friend of his, because they're all friends there, mm -hmm. you know, tackles me, puts me in these plastic a handcuffs. Actually tackles you. You know, like a, like a delicate, like, lay down. Like tackle a delicate lay down, better, so sure. I say, <laughs> I say tackle. He was completely in the right. I was a moron. He uh -huh. gave me the handcuffs. I went to the police police station with the pimple cream on my head. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't look tough with the pimple cream no. at the station. I'm not absolving him or anyone of that behavior, but the reality is that we shouldn't have to see it or know it just because they're entertainers. We should only show up when they entertain. My favorite quote from Shy about fame is that, quote, it robs you of your individuality. He said this in Complex Magazine in 2015, having no clue of the events that would follow in the next few years. We continue today's Totally Teen Week series that we've put together with our friends at Vanity Fair magazine. Shia LaBeouf isn't exactly a household name yet, but he will be soon, trust me. Perhaps best known for his Emmy award-winning role as Louis Stevens on the Disney Channel's Even Stevens. LaBeouf right, is also on. making come a big on, splash right, on the big screen. Really He's currently starring in Holes opposite Sigourney Weaver and John Voight, and will also be appearing in some of this summer's biggest blockbusters. The talented yeah, young actor God. also highlighted in Vanity Fair's Thank July you. issue. Shia, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. You are on fire. Three movies this summer. I don't know what's going on, man. What are you going to do this summer? <laughs> Just take it off and rest? I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. It's like... I, I seem to uh, be safer in my life when I'm working, and it just makes everything better. You know what I mean? I feel the same way about my teenagers, by the way. Keep them moving. They she stay said, out of trouble. Yeah, exactly. Nick he knows this feeling because he's lived it from the beginning. He was once a part of the Mickey Mouse machine that has churned out many a screwed up child star not unlike himself. And he realizes that in some way, you were just a cog of the machine. Then the machine changed, but the role of his fame did not. His struggles with his public transgressions have nothing to do with anything he starred in from Nymphomaniac to Transformers. But, as a brand, somehow it's exciting that an attachment to a product is somehow acting up. Beyond the personal responsibility of transgressions, it's not our business even if it is entertaining. I know him to be a good actor, but his public life to me is more performance art than any of the actual performance art that he's performed with intent. Him wrestling a random man in the street and stealing his hat is far more interesting than his work and much easier to consume and report on. When you show up to work and your job is on the world stage, 
you were not afforded a bad day or a crazy night out. You can't keep to yourself and just carry on throughout your day. So this is where the machine pushes the parts into overdrive. Send him out on a talk show or SNL or wherever he can be because all press is good press. Have him partake in his own overexposure and make it even more entertaining with humor. Make him forget his right to privacy and make him forget that it will supersede his ability to make other people rich off his talents and misfortunes. Shia also commented on Celebrity in that same 2015 Complex interview, you must become an enslaved body, just flesh. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, he was asked about all his time and the headlines being shown in the worst light. He emphasized, I think context is really important and I think what Honey Boy does is it contextualizes who I was publicly and kind of plays on it. And I'm grateful it's effective. In short, for better or for worse, there is a reason for all that he does. This does not absolve him from knowing right versus wrong, but it at least lets him create a more realistic and fully rounded portrayal of himself, ironically, in film, a medium of fantasy and chosen truths to depict. He chose what's truth he wanted and found autonomy in the art form that catapulted him to stardom and put him in a position to have to feel isolated and deconstructed as a full human being in the first place. Truly poetic justice. He argues that celebrities are enslaved by fame and I agree. In the past, I have even likened it to a human zoo in my previous documentary, Hollywood is a Human Zoo. Sometimes I feel I'm living a meaningless life and I get frightened, LaBeouf lamented about fame. If fame intercepts all the joys of life whenever it pleases, then what is the point of it? I can see how anyone can feel that way. Shia grew up poor in Echo Park to two parents too ashamed to go on food stamps, and he reflects on that childhood with both pain and glee, like we all do about the best and worst aspects of life. So I could understand if that money would make the poverty aspects of that former life feel great now, but is it worth the money now? Who's to say but the famous themselves? The general consensus is that it's not. In my aforementioned documentary, I compare the entertainer being able to entertain as a sort of distraction to the fact that they're caged. Shine the spotlight, throw the peanuts, give them the attention, then lock them away. No wonder why they feel enslaved. Why are you so aggressive? Huh? Huh? Why are you so aggressive, bro? Huh? Why are you so aggressive? Huh? What you gonna do about it? You gonna, you gonna fight me? Just leave him alone. Are you gonna fight me because I'm videotaping you, bro? You guys want everything. You guys want the money, the fame, the privacy, huh? For all that they do, there is no entertainment that can be provided that satiates the audience and the star because we receive a product and they give up their humanity to provide it. Quote, actors live dependent on being validated by other people's opinions. I don't understand what it is that I do that people want. I don't know what an actor does. I have no credentials. I don't know what I'm doing. To my mind, talent doesn't really exist. Talent is like a card player's luck. It is motivation, ambition, and luck. It's just a drive to be the best. I think acting is a con game. I agree. I've been a runner my whole life, running from myself, whether to movies or drinking, and drugging, or effing calamity, or whatever it is, I've always been running. He has a lot of problems to run from. An abusive addict dad plus validation needed from fame can cause this outcome. He continues, You can't fast forward experience. I'm not a very intelligent person, and you've got to be an effing genius to learn from other people's mistakes because you've got to be a very smart man to learn from your own. Let's hope he's learned at least something about fame. Subscribe to join the U Universe. Do it! Just do it! So just do it! Just do 